In this video, we solve problem 17 from the Larson Calculus text 10th edition um, from section 2.6. It's an example of what's called a related rates problem. We're going to work through um, the problem statement and talk about what we're doing, and then we'll discuss why it's called related rates. So here's the problem statement. It says sand falls in a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. The diameter of the base of the cone is three times its altitude. At what rate is the height of the pile changing as when the sand is 15 feet high? Well, when I read this problem statement, the first thing I do is I look for anything that sounds like math. Anytime I see the word rate, I, I write, I'm thinking of a derivative. Anytime I see um, sort of words from geometry or um, particular numbers, then I know I probably want to write that down as well. So let's read this statement again and then try to infer sort of what is given in terms of um, symbols. Like we want to write everything in terms of variables that we're going to define in the problem statement. So let's read this first um, statement. It says, sand falls into a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. So when I see conical pile, I say, okay, that's fine. It's going to be a cone. So I would draw a cone. And then it says at a rate, as soon as I see that word rate, I'm thinking that's a derivative. And that rate is 10 cubic feet per minute. So when I think, okay, I've got a derivative and it's 10 cubic feet per minute, what type of derivative are we talking about? We're talking about the change in um, this variable with respect to this variable. So I look at the units of the numerator and the denominator. Since I've got cubic feet here, I know we're talking about a rate of change of volume. And since we're dividing by minutes, I know we're talking about a change of volume with respect to time. So they're telling us that sand falls in a conical pile. So we're dealing with a cone. Um, the, we're talking about a volume that is essentially um, a cone shaped volume. And the, we know the rate of change of that volume is 10 cubic feet per minute. So we'll write dv dt, so that's change in volume with respect to time, is equal to 10 cubic feet per minute. So we know that v is a function of time. And it's volume in cubic feet at time t in minutes. And then what else do we know? We know that diameter of the base, it, the diameter of the base of the cone is three times its altitude. The altitude is the height and the diameter is just that distance uh, from uh, all the way across that circle on the base. Um, so we know that diameter is three times the height. Altitude and height are the same thing. And we're asked, it's, or in the next part, we're asked a question. It says, at what rate? So there's that um, uh, word rate again. So I'm, knowing, I'm looking for a derivative. Is the height of the pile changing? At what rate is the height of the pile changing? So I'm looking for dh dt. And because our volume was measured in cubic feet per minute, we know that our height will be measured in feet per minute. Our height will be measured in feet and our um, change in height with respect to time will be in feet per minute. So at what rate is the height of the pile changing with respect to time, which is implied when the sand is 15 feet high? And if the sand is 15 feet high, that means our height is 15. So we've got the sand and it's coming in to this pile at 10 cubic feet per minute. And so we've got this sort of pile of sand that resulted from that. And this is what we know. So we read our problem statement very carefully. We take every statement, every sentence, and we translate it into something symbolic, something involving some variables. And we use common sense variables. We use V for volume. We use lowercase t for time. We use H for height. Um, and we label our pictures. They talk about a conical pile. We draw a right circular cone and we label that picture with a, a height h and a diameter of 3h because of this uh, second uh, statement in our problem statement. And so the question says, at what rate is the height of the pile changing when the sand is 15 feet high? Um, so 
here's where we um, get into the related rates. These problems are called related rates problems because I know the rate of the change of a rate of change of volume with respect to time, and I want to know the rate of change of height with respect to time. I can find the rate of change of height um, given the rate of change of volume because I know how the volume and the height are related. Now, if you're saying to yourself, okay, well, if I know I'm dealing with a cone and I've got all this information, um, if I know how the volume and the height are related, I can find the relationship between those rates of change. I'm also going to need the equation that relates the radius and the height and the volume, um, or and the radius and the height of the cone to the volume of the cone. And that's actually given right here. Now, I think in the book, it actually says hint, the formula for the volume of a cone is this, but if that was not given in the book, if this was your entire problem statement, you might have to say, okay, do I remember the volume for the height of a cone? Or do I remember the equation for the volume of a cone with a radius of R and a height of H? If I don't remember that, I can just search online. I can Google it. I say, search for volume of a cone and you'll find this formula. This is also in the front cover, excuse me, the back cover of our calculus textbook. So this is enough information to tell us how the volume is related to the radius of the cone and the height of the cone. Okay, so we know we know H, we know dV dt, we want dH dt. And so in order to find that relationship between dV dt and dH dt, we want to take the derivative of both sides of this equation that relates V to H with respect to time. So we know that volume is changing with time. We know that height is changing with time. We know the radius is changing with time. Um, so when we take the derivative of this with respect to time, um, we keep all of that in mind when we differentiate. So I've got volume equals one third pi r squared h. If I didn't know that, I would look it up. If it wasn't given in the textbook, um, I would find it in the textbook cover. Um, we've got a lot of volume or volume and surface area formulas there, or I would Google it. And then I would say, okay, um, how can I find the relationship between these two rates? Well, I take the derivative with respect to time. And I say, but wait a minute, hold on a second. Um, volume is changing with respect to time, but what else is changing with respect to time? As we drop sand in this little pile, um, not only is the volume changing with respect to time, height is changing with respect to time. So this h of t is going to represent our height in feet at time t in seconds, or excuse me, in minutes. And also the radius is changing with respect to time. The radius is going to be in feet as well. And it's a time that will be given in minutes. Now, if I differentiate both sides with respect to time, I have to keep the fact that R is a function of time and H is a function of time in mind when I take the derivative. But I might not actually want to jump right into that. Let's look at what we know. We know dV dt, we know H, and we are looking for dH dt. We don't have any information about R at all, not right here. So I would really prefer to have this equation just relating the volume and the height, because if I had a relationship between volume and height only, then it would be really easy, very, very simple to differentiate both sides with respect to time and find the relationship between the rate of change of volume and the rate of change of height. But that means I need to get this radius in terms of height. You say, okay, do I have enough information to find the radius in terms of height? Well, it turns out I do because of that second statement in our problem statement, it said the diameter of the base, which we know is two times the radius, is three times its altitude. So two times the radius is three times the altitude of that cone, and the altitude of the cone is the height of the cone. So we can solve this for r relatively simply by um, dividing both sides by two, and we have that the radius is uh, three halves of the height. So I can replace r with 3 divided by 2 times h. And now I've got my volume entirely in terms of height. I have 1 third pi times this expression squared. To square that, you're going to square the fraction, square the h. To square the fraction, you square the numerator and square the denominator. 
So we've got three squared over two squared times h squared times another h. Three goes into nine three times. So we end up with three fourths pi and then h squared times h is h cubed. And now I know that's how my volume and height are related to each other, provided that the diameter is three times the height. And then you say, okay, now that I know how volume and height are related without including r at all, we can differentiate both sides with respect to time. The derivative of v with respect to time is just dv dt. On the left-hand side, we've got 3 fourths pi times h cubed. We're taking the derivative with respect to time. The 3 fourths pi is just a constant. The derivative of h cubed with respect to time is 3 times h squared. That's the derivative of the outside function evaluated at that inside function, where the inside function is h of t times the derivative of the inside, which is dh dt. We can simplify that. 3 times 3 fourths is well, 3 over 1 times 3 over 4 is 9 over 4. So multiplying straight across. So dv dt is 9 over 4 uh, times pi times h squared times dh dt. And if I want to get dh dt by itself, and I do, because that's what we're looking for, I can just divide both sides by this. So um, dh dt is equal to dv dt all divided by 9 fourths pi times h squared. And that's how we find our answer. Now that is in general. We know that that's true, provided everything in our problem statement is true. But at um, h equals 15 feet and derivative of volume with respect to time equals 10 cubic feet per second, or excuse me, minute, we get this 10 cubic feet per minute in the numerator divided by 9 over 4 times pi times 15 feet squared. So you're going to have feet cubed divided by feet squared is going to give you feet in the numerator and then per minute in the denominator. So we end up with 10 divided by 9 pi times 15 squared, and that 4 in the denominator can be brought up to the numerator. Just multiplying by the reciprocal. It's going to be feet per minute. And that is approximately some number. We can use a calculator to find that number. So if we simplify, we get this. So our height is changing at 0 0.00629 feet per minute when our the height of that pile of sand is 15, tall, 15 feet tall um, and the change in volume of the pile with respect to time is 10 cubic feet per minute. Um, so that's how we do that. Now, if we weren't given this second um, statement, the diameter of the base of the cone is three times its altitude, we might find um, the rate of change of volume with respect to the radius and height differently. We know that the volume is changing with time. The height of the conical pile is changing with time and the radius is changing with time. All three of them are changing at the same time. If we wanted to, we could find the rate of change of volume um, with respect to the others um, by just taking the derivative of this with respect to time implicitly using the product rule for that derivative on the right. So let's, let's do that. And dv dt is the derivative with respect to time of 1 third times pi times r squared times h. That 1 third pi is a constant. And we take the derivative of r squared times h because r is a function of time and h is a function of time. We have to use the product rule. So that's my first function and that's my second function. The derivative of the product is the derivative of the first times the second, undifferentiated, plus the derivative of the second times the first. And the derivative of 2r with respect to time, well, if r is a function of t, 
that's two times the inside function, which is r of t, times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, which is dr dt. So if you simplify this by distributing that one third pi, you get one third pi times two is two thirds pi. And then we've got r times h times dr dt plus one third pi r squared times dh dt. That's equal to dv dt. Now this tells us the relationship between the change in volume with respect to time and any change in the radius with respect to time and the change in height with respect to time. So we've got this, this cone and all three are changing at the same time. Now, if r is equal to a constant, then dh or then dr dt would equal zero. So in that case, dr dt is zero. This is gone. If r is equal to a constant, we just end up with dv dt equals this one third pi r squared times dh dt. That's if our radius was fixed and that height was just getting larger and larger and larger. One thing I want you to notice about that is the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared times h. Notice that if we treated h, or if we treat r as a constant, then our volume is just this constant times h. So the derivative of volume with respect to h then would just be the constant. That's exactly what we have right here. The coefficient of h, if r is being treated as a constant and h is being treated as a variable, is just um, is the coefficient of dh dt here. This is called uh, the partial derivative of v with respect to h. So it tells us how the volume is changing with respect to the height when r is equal to a constant. If I take that change in volume with respect to height and I multiply by the change in height with respect to time, I get the change in volume with respect to time as h changes holding uh, while holding r constant. And then you might ask yourself, okay, well, what if h is constant? What if I have a constant height and my radius is changing? Well, if my const if my height is constant, the change in height with respect to time is zero because it's always the same, right? And so then this term would be zero and I would just get this. Well, if you look at this function, if you treat h as a constant and you differentiate with respect to r, well, the derivative of r squared is just two r, and the one third, the pi and the h are constants. So you'd have one third pi h times two r, which gives us two thirds pi r h. So this function here is actually the derivative of your, or the what we call the partial derivative of volume with respect to the radius. It's the change in volume with respect to the radius. So as the radius changes, given that the height is held constant. And if we multiply that change in volume with respect to the radius by the change in the radius with respect to time, we get a change in volume with respect to time as the radius changes while the height is constant. You say, but what if, what if they're both changing? What if the radius is changing and the height is changing? Well, then you get the change in volume with respect to time due to changes in the radius. And then you add the change in volume with respect to time due to changes in the height. And that gives you a total change in volume with respect to time, um, you just add those two pieces together. This, these symbols here are partial derivative symbols. This is the partial derivative of v with respect to r and the partial derivative of v with respect to h. It's what we use when our function depends on two variables rather than one. That's a little bit of a preview for what we'll talk about in Calculus 3.
In calculus one, our functions are usually functions of one variable only, but in calculus three, we can have functions of two variables. So rather than having y as a function of x, we might have z as a function of x and y. Um, just for example, um, here our volume is a function of r and h, and we can find the rate of change of volume with respect to time um, by looking at the contributions from each of the variables. If r changes with time and h changes with time, then this is a, sort of a, a three-dimensional chain rule. We have the contribution from the change in volume with respect to r as time changes, or excuse me, as r changes with time, plus the contribution of no, plus the contribution to the change in volume with respect to time due to changes in h while, while r is held constant. Okay, I don't know if that helped or not. I just think it's kind of neat that you can see sort of the pattern. Um, but we'll we'll talk more about that later. Um, but again, this section is called related rates. It's talking about how rates of change are related to each other. And we're going to do a lot of word problems. So, and almost all of the word problems involve taking some equation that we know and then using implicit using implicit differentiation to differentiate both sides with respect to t. So we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to t, or this equation here with respect to t, and we get this expression. And there are actually five unknowns here, dv dt, dr dt, and dh dt, and then r and h. If we know any four of those, we can infer the fifth. So if we have enough prob or if we have enough information in our problem statement, we should be able to find four out of five of those variables, substitute those in, and then solve for the thing that we're looking for. Um, since we're in calculus one though, um, we were given enough information to find our volume as a function of one variable only. And since it was a function of one variable, we just um, differentiate like this. And it's a little bit more straightforward than having to use the product rule. Um, but uh, actually we would get the same answer either way. And I'm not gonna do that in this video. I think that's, I'm going too far with it. Um, but that that's how we solve a related rates problem. Read the problem carefully, write down what's given, try to figure out what's not given. If you have to look anything up, like a formula for volume, look that up. And then once you've got your formula, try to write it in terms of one variable only because we're in Calc 1. Or, other, or in other words, try to find a relationship between the various indep independent variables in your problem so that we've got a, a function that depends on only one variable and then differentiate both sides with respect to time to find out how those two rates of change that you're interested in are related to each other.